Hello and welcome to this installment of BWV TV. I'm Brian Guzai, Associate Editor of the Bioprocess International Magazine. Um, and as day one here at the conference is wrapping up, I'm joined by uh, Melissa Carpio, a, a global uh, technology consultant at Sartorius Stedham Biotech. Yep. Um, so let's just jump right in, I suppose. Sure. So, yeah. um, so during this conference, you gave a presentation about process intensification. Yeah. So what, what does it actually mean to intensify a process? Yeah, I know it's been a buzzword in the industry and, and be, me being an industry before Sartorius, I've heard it a lot. And, and you know, you start to think about what does it mean? And I think for different companies, even for different people, they mean different things. Okay. And for me and for what we see at Sartorius, it really means getting more for less essentially. So the idea is that that can mean any part of the process, whether it's the entire process, which is the goal, um, or different smaller pieces of the process. So can you give an example of the benefits of intensification? Sure. So I could do, a, so starting on the smaller end. So one of Sartarius's flagship products is the, the microbioreactor, the amber. And right now that is the industry standard for um, process uh, cell line development, process optimization, and we're working on it for process characterization, for fed batch. And I think when you start to think, oh, I want to intensify it, what does that actually mean? And that's using those tools to now looking at getting higher densities, looking at perfusion, perfusion mimic, um, continuous, or you know, concentrated fed batch. Uh, and those are all examples of intensification, which shows kind of the broad range of it. On the larger mm -hmm. scale, so the manufacturing scale, you start to think about like the seed train. So when you thaw to the point you get to the production reactor, it can take a certain amount of days. How can you reduce that in terms of time, reduce that in terms of cost, or reduce that in terms of the number of unit operations to get from thaw to production reactor? So those are the places where you can intensify, essentially. So say a company wants to see if intensification works for them. How yeah. do they go about doing that? You know, it's, it's pretty simple. And I say that with a <laughs> grain of salt, but simple in the sense that a lot of our existing systems, it's small modifications or no modification at all. It's a different consumable and you can at least try intensification. So I think the biggest example is like the Amber 250, which if a company has it for perfusion, for um, fed batch right now, they could add the perfusion option and then buy the perfusion consumable and then test it out, try it out. Um, and then if they like it for certain products or molecules and don't like it for others, that same system can be used for both. So in terms of that, flexibility is also intensification because you get more out of one system. Uh, and then also when you look at the larger scales, uh, it's the same thing. So for our rocking motion bioreactor, if people are using it right now for batch, for seed train, or even for fed batch, if they want to try it for perfusion, it's just a different bag. It's a bag with a perfusion membrane. So no, new, no need for new hardware. Most of the time, no need for new software either. Um, so it's really, it's a nice way for people to get into it at any stage in the process. Yeah. So thank you for sharing your yeah, expertise. No problem. Um, and thank you for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for the next installment of BWB TV. Thank you.